From Nashville, Tennessee, Inside the Noise Podcast with your host, Jenna Heidman. Here's Jenna. Hey guys, what's up? We are back and I'm super excited to get back into the swing of things after the hectic summer and do a little spotlight episode. We got to go inside the noise of the Music City PBR knockout when it came to Nashville and we sat down with three cowboys during that stop to learn a little bit more more about them and the sport. And if y'all listen to the podcast, you know how obsessed I am with cowboy country music, the rodeo, Wrangler jeans, anything in that realm. So it was a super cool experience. I got to bring along my friends, Samantha and Aubrey, to enjoy the experience with me and help with all things. And it was amazing. It's something we'll never forget. And we want to thank the PBR for having us out. Um, These cowboys we sat down with are such respectable men. None of them had a bad week when we asked them about the Make Some Noise, Stop That Noise. They all called us ma'am, and it was just an amazing experience. Um, Cody Nance is from Tennessee, and he is also a big Cody Johnson fan, so we'll for sure get along. But before we dive into the interviews, I binge-listened a ton of rodeo songs before we went to the PBR Music City Knockout, and these are my top five. Number five, Dear Rodeo, Cody Johnson. Number four, Amarillo by Morning by George Strait. Number three, Rodeo by Garth Brooks. Number two, July and Cheyenne by Aaron Watson, which actually helped me become an Aaron Watson fan. And number one, Much Too Young to Feel This Damn Old by Garth Brooks. You can listen to all those songs on our new Cowboy Country, Cowboy Noise playlist on Spotify. Go give it a follow. And I hope you guys enjoy going inside the noise of the PBR. Welcome to Inside the Noise Podcast. I'm Jenna. Hey, I'm Sam. I'm Aubrey. And we're here with Cody Nance. Hi, Jenna, Sam, and Aubrey. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Um, so each time on the podcast, we started off with make some noise, stop that noise. So something you want to make some noise about from your week and something that you're like, nah, I want to stop that noise. Oh, uh, we make some noise. We're alive. We're healthy. We're blessed. Yes, sir. That's a great response. make the noise. Yes. <laughs> 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 was there a stop that noise? <clears throat> no, I'm just clearing my throat right oh. now. <laughs> okay. Um, so, kind of give our listeners a little bit of backstory of like how you started bull riding and how you got into everything. Mm, I was two years old when I met my stepfather, and he was a bull rider and had uh, been riding for several years, and around that time had quit and started judging a bunch of rodeos. So I still got to go and watch a bunch of rodeos and bull riding was just always one of them things that stuck out to me. I wanted to ride ever since I was a little boy but I didn't get to ride till I was about 15, it was 14, 15 when I got on my first one. I got on three that night, rode the first two, I was hooked. I got my PBR permit in 2008, got me a good job hanging guardrails so you would say but it would allowed me to be able to, you know, well it was all heavy and bulky and I got strong carrying it around and I worked a lot of hours and got enough money I could go to the PBRs the way I needed to. And, qualified on the Built for Tough series in 2009, um, made the finals ever since, now you know it's the Monster Elite Tour and uh, it's continued to grow and I've seen the sport change over the time, it's been wonderful. Yeah, how has it changed over the time? Uh, it's just continued to uh, uh, advance as far as like the marketing standpoint, um, social media has brought it to new levels, uh, ride pass the app that people watch you know that they can get the live stream um it was on uh versus i think when i first started and now it's on cbs sports network it's pretty cool yeah it has definitely grown and i've fallen in love with it over the past year i can't get enough it's the culture and everything that comes with it that draws me in well, it's, uh, it's cowboy and everybody can relate you know everybody has watched a western and seen cowboy uh ride you know john wayne or whoever you know bonanza you, you got all these old cowboy movies that these old men grew up and they're trying to keep it alive and then you know you hear you got bull riding and and so then these uh these old cowboys are 
encouraging their youngins. And then you got people that don't know anything about uh, any kind of Western style and uh, or Western lifestyle. And then, you know, here we show up at their city and they come out and they see a bunch of cowboys riding wild bulls and heck, it inspires them to do something different with their lives, you know, so, uh, or make the best out of what they got going on. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, on a day like today, like, what does your typical day look like from the time you wake up to the time the event starts? I wake up and I woke up and went to the gym, got me a good warm up, uh, came back, drank me a protein shake, and I came over here, got some uh, PT work done, tried to loosen up, get everything squared up, ready to go, got warmed up, loosened up, got up my rope ready, uh, got it good and sticky with the rosin, and so it'll hang on to me. And um, I just had to, you know, get my spurs and everything set up. And then, uh, you know, we had a 245 start time, and, you know, we have intros, we'll kick it off big, and, and then uh, you go ride our bulls. I mean, it's like a kind of like a hometown. This is a hometown gig. Gig, deal, yeah. so yeah. i got a lot of family here supporting yeah. me. It's been great. Were they a part exciting. of your pregame today, too? Uh, not, ready? not too much. I come up here, and uh, we uh, we just spend some time in the locker room yeah. visiting and getting stuff ready. You know, we don't uh, get to see our families as much as we do each other. I think we're on the road probably more than we're at home. What's yeah. it like the work-life balance being on the road so much? You have family, correct? I do. Yeah. I got a wife and three kids, and um, it's a full-time job, this bull riding. I mean, people don't realize it, and they think, well, um, you know, we must be making tons of money because they see how much, but um, they don't figure in the expenses, and it mm-hmm. costs us a lot to travel. Um, at this level, there is a lot more money up for grabs, so you're all obviously getting on ranker stock. So uh, during the week, we're going to be taking uh, – Precautions try to get our body ready for the next one, you know, whether that be working out or rehab or whatever it takes. You think it's going to be like a family business? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I've yeah. got two little boys and they act like they want to be bull riders, so I won't push the issue. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to take care of yourself on the road or any self care tips that you can give? Oh, I take Epsom salt baths and just kind of get loosened up and stretch and roll out. And, um, the the sports medicine crew that come, comes and travels with the PBR, they do really well um, as far as keeping uh, our joints and everything lined up. And Dr. Tandy Freeman, he can uh, uh, perform his surgeries or put you on the put you to the doctor that you need to go see if you get injured. And um, we just got a really good staff as far as that goes. And you know, and then a really good group of guys. We just love to ride bulls and. Uh, this is what we've been doing most of our lives and it's something that we can all challenge each other and, and be great at. There must be like a huge like camaraderie and like a big family behind that too. You said that you're here and yeah, away from absolutely. your family too. Absolutely, you so. know, and so, uh, you know, when these guys, they draw a rank bull and, you know, they're like our brother and we're not trying to compete against each other. We're just going out there and trying to do our job and help each other do their job the best they can too. Definitely. Yeah. Well, um, so we're going to try this again. <laughs> so we normally interview a lot of artists, musicians, um, huge in the Texas country scene. Are you a Texas country fan? Country I like fan? Texas country. Okay. So what are you, who are your top three in Texas? Um, I'm kind of a big uh, Cody Johnson fan. Okay. But then, uh, yeah, um, I don't know if because I don't remember. Anything, okay, well, we have a game we're going to play right now, done. and we're all part of it. But <laughs> so well, I hope it's not a name game because I'm terrible with names. Do you know some songs, some like cowboy rodeo songs? Well, I do. Uh, Chris do. I know some of his old stuff. Okay, we're gonna do a draft of like a Mount Rushmore of your top four cowboy rodeo songs. My top four? I can help you out. <laughs> I have a list. I don't know the names. Everything goes blank when you're on the yeah. spot. I oh, yeah. literally I have a list. I cheated. I have a whole list in front of me. So yeah, same. now at this point. But I mean, you can think of like Garth Brooks, George Strait, Tim McGraw, um, Aaron Watson, uh, Cody Johnson. Well, there's a uh, oh, it's got to be from one artist. No, you can anywhere. Or anywhere. Four songs yeah. at all. Four songs at four all. Four songs total. Um, I like the movie, the song Seventeen by Chris Do. Uh, the winner. There's an old one called Sage in Her Hair by Dave Stanley. That's a cowboy song right there. Most people don't know. And you got, <laughs> and you got that one old, uh, let me see who we got. Uh, 
Have you ever heard of uh, the Bronx Ballet? No. no. Oh, you need to listen to that one. <laughs> All right, I'm taking notes over here. The Bronx Ballet. That's one you got to listen to on the way home. Okay. Put that Homework. one up there. I feel like that's a really good, like, metaphorical, like, vision of what the, your eight-second ride is. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, it's graceful, right? Right, that's yeah. Right. Well, they say, you know, it's a dance, you know, the bull's got to lead the way. You can't make him go one way or another, and he's going to do what he's going to do, so you just got to be with him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a good metaphor. It's a good metaphor. <laughs> um, all right, so to wrap it up, we have one more thing. Okay. We usually do off-the-record confessions, but since we're at PBR, we're going to do dish your dirt. So you have to, like, confess something weird or embarrassing about yourself. Confess to all our weird listeners. Or embarrassing? There's nothing weird. <laughs> just own it. There's nothing weird. Yeah, there's nothing weird. <laughs> okay, where can everyone follow you if they want to keep up with you and what you're doing? Oh, uh, they can follow me on uh, Cody Nance Professional Board right on uh, Facebook or uh, Cody Nance PBR. Um, it's on Instagram and Cody West Nance on Instagram actually. I think. Turn it up just to let them know <laughs> When the storm rolls in I'm gonna be ready Side piece on my head In case it gets heavy Like a cowboy Kicking down doors And taking it It's been all right. It's been all right, day. Yep. How are you enjoying Nashville? Uh, Nashville, it's real cool. I didn't know it was going to be this big. I've never seen so many party buses in my life. <laughs> What's the most ridiculous one you've seen? There's like the Pedal Tavern, there's the tractors. Probably the, tra like, the, tra the tractors. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Being out, Different, like, yeah. out of the, the farm area. Yeah. Now yeah. Like it is a thing. There's like three or four different companies that have tractors here. It's ridiculous. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so each week on the podcast, it's called Inside the Noise. So we started off with make some noise, stop that noise. So a good week, bad week. Something you want to make noise about, something you want to stop that noise about. Yeah, what was what was the highlight of your week so far? Let's start there. I guess it would just be coming to Nashville because I didn't do good here. But Is this your first time in Nashville? Yep. Yes, awesome. Where have you been? Have you got any favorite places here? Um, I We ate at one place. Uh, I can't even remember the name. <laughs> we ate there twice because... It was yeah, quiet. Okay. I, it was, a lot of the bars are real loud. You're so loud. I just can't eat there. Right. And where are you from? I'm from New York. From New York. Okay. Yes, How'd you get into bull riding? Well, my family was actually, they own a rodeo company. I was born in North Carolina, so I started getting on sheep and um, steers there. At what age? Um, Just real young. Really? Like, I started with my sheep when I was just, just a baby and then worked my way up to calves and then just kept working up from there. Kept going from there. Oh, yes, where in North Carolina are you from? I was born in Henderson. It's yeah. over kind okay. of about an hour from. Yeah. Cool. I'm from Raleigh, and it, we kind of go back between like mountains and yeah. Raleigh. So. Yeah. Yeah. On a day like today, like what does your typical day look like from like the time you wake up to the end of the day? Oh, um, I woke up and went and got something to eat, and, <laughs> um, and then came over here for an interview, and then went back to the hotel and just kind of hung out for a little bit, and then came back and got ready. Do you have like weird things that you do before? And everybody's got their thing right before they go on, so. I wouldn't say like I have anything weird. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you a fan of country music? I am a fan. I don't really have any fa I listen to <laughs> we're, crap. We're always driving I'm a fan, and stuff. But yeah. no, one, no one's your favorite? Uh, nah, I don't know. <laughs> Do you have, like, go-to, like, rock music or something else that you listen to? Or? I don't even really. I just turn a playlist on on Apple Music and listen to it. We're all I'm always driving cuz I rodeo too. Mm -hmm. So I listen to like a variety of music. Yeah. All I right, like top like three three I artists guess, that you like can't stop listening to. Like I really don't even I just listen. <laughs> he like he likes Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, okay. <He> like <laughs> okay. Not Justin Bieber. <laughs> okay, so each week on the podcast too, we do off the road confessions, but since we're here today at PBR, we're going to do dish your dirt. So you had to like confess something weird or embarrassing about yourself. Or like something that happened that like. Um. <laughs> I don't even know. Probably the one of the most stupidest things I've, like I've ever felt, like lately is I was at a PBR in Canada and I went to fly to America, but I I drove to Canada, and I just have an enhanced driver license, so I got there. These guys dropped me off, and I didn't have a passport, so I couldn't fly. So I had to call them back, and they were like. 
I had to be 30 <laughs> minutes down the road oh and say, hey, you don't mind coming back and get me? And then I had to get my car and then drive across the border and then fly. Oh, no. So I kind of felt a little dumb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I'm sure you ever made calm. I mean, yeah. you do some pretty big things in eight seconds of your life, so you're probably like, all right, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt bad asking them to come back and get me. Right. right. Like, no, right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, where can everyone follow you on social media and keep up with what you're doing? Uh, Instagram is Dalen underscore Swearingen. And I think Facebook is just Dalen Swearingen. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. No trouble. And daddy told me never let them see you struggle. Can't win the game if you run from the hustle. No. If anybody try to test me, you want to square up. Find out what a no boy's made of. Start nothing, but when the time comes, I turn it up just to let them know. When the storm rolls, then I'm gonna be ready. Side piece on my head in case it gets heavy. Like a cowboy kicking down doors and taking names. John Wayne. Go buy anything. Call me anything, but don't call me late to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> And he's got a tagline, too. Uh, oh, my gosh. Okay, so each week on the podcast, we started out with make some noise, stop that noise. So a good week, bad week. Is this your bad part of your week right now? Yeah, yeah right now. Oh, okay. I oh, man. Bad part. I don't have a bad part of my week, man. I'm Aww. just living life. That's good. What's up? I get paid to do what I love, so I don't have a bad life, so I can't have a bad week. That's awesome. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you smashed that idea. <laughs> smashed it. What's, what's the best part of your week so far? Your Nashville? Uh, riding my bulls because <laughs> that's how I get paid so uh, that's been good so far Music City is awesome I love live music so it's been cool just to walk around and listen to so many random people be able to sing so well <laughs> yeah what are your favorite places to go down here in Nashville um, I don't know <laughs> I've just been kind of casually walking around I don't even look at the names I just kind of pop on in yeah see who, who sounds good and then I walk in how long have you been coming to Nashville like, this is my talks? first year Oh, okay. Yeah, first time ever being here besides driving through. Oh, dang. So, yeah. Well, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to Music City. Let you in on Thank a secret. You. Midtown is where it's at. Midtown is where it's Downtown, at. Downtown. Yeah. This is all great, but Midtown is where. So next time you come back, you gotta hit up Midtown. Yes. Gotta hit Midtown. There's a loser. There's a loser's there. there. That's the, OG. the original, yeah. The OG. <laughs> <laughs> losers, winners, and Red Door is where it's at. The devil lives at Red Door, though. You gotta watch out. Wait, what do you mean the devil is at? It's legit red. Nothing good happens there. And there's a body underneath the floor. I kid you not. A body underneath the floor. I would totally show you, but we can't go. Yeah, there's a body underneath the floor. scary. We're scaring him off. There's a body underneath the floor. I swear. He's like, do I want to come back down? Is it like, it's a dead body? Is it like a real body? Like, Too soon to tell. You gotta go see for yourself. Um, okay, but <laughs> let's, let's change the subject. Um, can I give our listeners your background story and how you got into bull riding and what brought you here? Um, so I grew up in a small town. Well, back and forth between a small town and a big town. But uh, my dad was a horse dentist, so uh, we'd go to rodeos all the time. And I don't know, from the time I was a kid, I knew I wanted to be a cowboy. And uh, when we go to rodeos, I was just fascinated by bull riding. I mean, everything rodeo, but bull riding definitely. And... My dad frowned upon that idea for a long time. My mom also did. And eventually there was a like a little youth rodeo at our cowboy church put on and I entered it. I got to get on a steer and my dad was like, oh, well, that wasn't that bad. And then uh, so he decided to let me continue doing it. And then we realized I was too old to actually do steer riding so I was at that little rodeo. So I got thrown in the peewee bulls and I don't know, just kept riding bulls and moved out of my house when I turned 18, just left, never came back. It's kind of funny, <laughs> but um, after that, I just took it serious, and I don't know, I had a lot of great people coming into my life and helped me progress through the sport, and now I'm one of the best bull riders in the world, I guess. <laughs> yeah, how do you train for that? Uh, yeah, so we work out like anything else, but we don't like hit heavy weights and stuff like that, but uh, work out like anybody else, and uh, we just pretty much get on bulls. It's, our training is actually doing the, the deal so okay it's when crazy start too I mean when like you started riding early on start? anyway but no. yeah what was uh, like the first I mean, you're mentioning it right now in your story but I think I was like 15 or 16 the first yeah. time I ever got on a bull and 
you know, I'm 22 now, so I started kind of late oh, wow. compared to a lot of guys. Yeah. So, is your family on board now? Do they come and watch you? Oh yeah. Fully supportive. Yes. Yeah, so last weekend when we were in Houston, they got to come out because I mean we're in Texas, so everybody came out. So they're very supportive. They're the first people to text me, and then they're the first piece when I do good, and they're the first people to text me when I fall off and try to tell me what to do. But they don't <laughs> know anything about bull riding, but they try to tell me what I'm doing wrong. So, I mean, it's pretty funny now. Um, how do you take care of yourself on the road? I don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> just keep getting beat up. Yeah. No, I just uh, try to sleep a whole bunch and get in the hot tubs when the hotels have hot tubs. Those are my that's my digs. That's the, <laughs> relax your muscles. Relax your muscles, yeah. Yeah. I'll sit in one of those for like two hours. You know. Two uh, hours. I love it. I just. I'm just so I'm just, like raisin fingers when you come out. Like yeah. completely dehydrated. That would have felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> On a day like today, what's your morning routine? And how do you get ready for an event? Um. So. The PBR. Uh, it's great, but it's so unorthodox. You never know what you're going to do. So for the most part, you wake up and whatever they need me to do. I mean, uh, like today we did a shoot for the Monster uh, Lounge thing and woke up and did that. Tried to go back to the room and lay down and just make sure I stay, keep my body fresh and then, I don't know, come talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> do you have like a, like a weird pregame, I don't know, like routine, if somebody caught you doing it, they'd be like, something what? that you have to do. Yeah, well, like, yeah, I'm a like sock guy, so like, if, <laughs> you know, I know the socks aren't good. And, like, if I fell off a bull in some socks, I won't wear them again. So I'll make sure I don't. Like, yeah. socks have bad oh. juju, dude. They can have good juju or bad juju. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I yeah, you said like, weird, oh, you said oh, weird words. I mean, that's about as weird that's as true. it gets, I guess. Now I'm thinking of all the socks that I have bad yeah. experiences in, and I need to throw them away. Yeah, throw them away. Yeah, I have no socks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you said you were a Texas guy. Are you into the Texas country music scene? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Top three favorites. Yeah, Don't get it wrong. <laughs> Probably Cody Johnson, Cole Wetzel, and Parker. I kind of sound basic, but okay. you know, that, those are my dudes. So. Yeah, those are the big guys right now. Yeah. We're mostly, we do a lot of music podcasts, uh-huh. so and we're big, I'm big in the Texas scene. Love Texas country music. You love Texas. I just right? love Texas. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dang, you got like two Texas stickers, okay. <laughs> Don't judge. I see you, I see you. Hold I, like, down. I like to trick people. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them from Illinois, they're like, they don't care. Yeah. But you can pretend you're from Texas. Oh yeah, everybody loves Texas. Everybody loves Texas. Do they, do they ask you that you ride your horse to school? I used to get that all the time. Do y'all like really ride your horses to school? No. We no, don't. you don't. We, we don't ride our horses. I to am school. from a small town, and we did have tractor day. We rode your tractor to school. <laughs> <laughs> Having once a year. Um, okay, so <laughs> she's not gonna. Want, she's not really living it. She's going right. <laughs> tractor day. <huh? laughs> it sounds weird now. Everything that I like say from my small town, I tell people like in the real world. I'm like, okay, those things were really weird. Just everything yeah. we did. We had to bring your dog day to school. Why is that a bad thing? Yeah, that's cool. a weird thing. I mean, it's a, yeah. Yeah. But I, like I dig that. Like, we all brought our dogs to school one day. It was like a day of the week. So who cleaned up after the dogs? I had to. <laughs> <laughs> we had a dog we adopted named Walter, and he was a little skittish, and he would go and pee on every trash can in the school. <laughs> Poor Walter. What a great name. <laughs> Walter, a great yeah. name for a dog. Yeah. Please tell me he was a chihuahua. And I think like a border collie type thing. Oh. I was going to say, Walter the Chihuahua. Well, okay, so you like country music. We are going to go around the room and do a Mount Rushmore of rodeo songs. So we're going to go around and draft your four top rodeo songs. Oh, gosh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, who wants to start? Because you're going to have the advantage if you start. Um, sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I can still make Shy and George Strait. Okay. So I can't use that one. Can't use that one. Um... Dear Rodeo, Cody Johnson. Okay. Hard pass. <laughs> Much too young, Garth Brooks. Oh. I'm just watching. Mm. Cheyenne, Cheyenne, Aaron Watson. Mm. You got Cheyenne on the dome. Same today. old bull by Kobe Yates. I don't even know that one. Yeah. Um, he used to ride bulls for the PBR and he sang country music for a while. Oh. Okay. Um, look into that one. I'll look into that one. <laughs> Where Cowboys Are King, Cody Johnson. Dang. That is a good one. It's a great one. I start my morning with that song when I go to work out. Um, 
Oh god, literally any Chris Lydia song that I'm um, blanking on. Any second ride? <laughs> I think y'all got This cowboy's at. Are you already yeah, out? Yeah, y'all are stumping me. Like, y'all put me on the spot. I should have had, like, a list. <laughs> I don't know this is happening either. Maybe so we I can try it again. I had a bad advantage. I knew it was happening. Yeah, that, that I have was a few cheating. more over here. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Beach is a Cheyenne, Garth Brooks. Um, Gypsy Amarillo by Morning. Oh, yeah. Classic. Classic. That's all I got. Gosh. I only had five down just in case one of them got stolen. <laughs> <laughs> so you cheated, cheated. <laughs> Like she was reading from a list. Mine like, was zero. Yeah. We're working hard. We're working I'm hard. I prepped and planned for this. That's why she's like, you'll have the advantage if you go first, because that was a list to <laughs> screw you all over after this. Man, I think mine was the best. <laughs> um, each week on the podcast, we also do um, off the record confessions, which we're changing it and calling it "Dish Your Dirt." <laughs> so you you say something embarrassing or like weird about yourself um we can all go i ain't going first i ain't going first <laughs> i'll go nose goes <laughs> okay i do this weekly but my family was in town this weekend and if you've been to the bathrooms in nashville they all have a bathroom attendant in there mm-hmm. and my stepmom kept being like i'm pay i paid 30 dollars to use the bathroom this weekend i said y'all you gotta use this trick you walk out and go i don't wash my hands i just walk right out so i don't wash my hands when i go out at night here that's my confession. So I know not to take it. <laughs> just don't take my hand. <laughs> wow. Add it to the list of regrets today. I'm going to shut her. I'm striking. I know, we're fine. It's Have you washed night. them since the last time yes. you were out? Yes. <laughs> just making sure. And just avoid bathroom attendance. Because I just shook your hand. <laughs> just making sure I didn't get contaminated or something. All right. Uh, I don't. I, there's, I don't even. There's you got so many. many. No, I don't. I'm a pretty cool guy. <laughs> oh, you got one. He also said the thing about the socks. I thought that, that was that pretty bad. Uh, yeah, the socks so is pretty your... bad. I'm clumsy. I'm like, I'll trip over my own feet like all the time. Yeah. I, f- I fell down the stairs the other day, just like sober and all. But just fell down the stairs. <laughs> it's better than falling up the yeah. stairs. It's super embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time, too. Oh, That's yeah, terrible. Super clumsy. Me and stairs aren't friends. That's why I take the elevator. <laughs> not because you're lazy. Yeah, not because I'm clumsy. <laughs> to save myself the embarrassment. Okay. Um. Oh, you're not gonna share. <laughs> Mine is so silly. Like I love snow, so I have this like extreme superstition when somebody's gonna say it's gonna snow. Like I like turn my pajamas inside out and put orange juice on the windowsill. Why do you flush like sugar down the toilet? Why do you do what? that? I don't know. I just I thought that was a <coughs> thing to make it snow. I've heard the pajamas. I've never heard the orange juice or the sugar. Well, there's that. I still do it to this day. Well, in Texas, we don't see snow, especially where I live. So it makes me really yeah. sad. It makes me really sad too. So like every time I go somewhere that's it's snow, like I become the biggest kid in the world, and like like I peg people with snowballs. Like that's my. <laughs> I've never got to make a snowman too, so that makes me sad. Like, oh really my gosh! Can you make like a dirt? A dirt man? <laughs> I don't think. I don't think, a mud I don't think it's the same a thing. A mud man? A mud version of it? I don't think it's the same thing. It's kind of sad. I made a snowman. <laughs> it's very sad. I guess, I guess that's my. That's embarrassing. I've never made a snowman. <laughs> You're sad about it. <laughs> One day. One day. <laughs> I mean, I see a trip in our future now. <coughs> Snowman. Like, Hit me up. I'm down. We'll go to Minnesota. They probably they have a lot Minnesota. of snow. Minnesota. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Can you say that again just one more time? Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. Um, okay. So you're from Texas. What are your top three grabs when you go into a Bucky's? Like your gas station stuff? Oh, shoot. Dr. Pepper Icy. Uh, some beef jerky. Okay. Like, the pepper kind, just the regular pepper kind. Yeah, that's my deal. And um, probably a bag of hot fries. Okay. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> what about you? Wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> I don't get to go that often. Yeah, but when you do go in, what do you get? Um, caramel corn. Okay. Beef jerky. And maybe some fudge. Some fudge? Okay. Yeah, fudge is too sweet. Yeah. Then, yeah. Being from Oklahoma, these this more fighting words. 
Quick Trip beats Bucky's by far. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is this even a real argument? <laughs> like, are yes. you just try, are you just trying to make something up so that you can like Oklahoma can seem relevant quick compared trip, to Texas? Coffee is well, just quick trip in general. I think that's great. Okay. No, I don't, especially the coffee. coffee. I've never mm-hmm. been, but I don't. <laughs> I don't feel like anyone gets excited to go to quick trip. Yeah. I do. I've never heard someone say yeah, that. They're quick. They're everywhere anyway. Like yeah, that is, Bucky's is a Texas thing. Like definitely. you go to quick trip, quick trip anyway. Is not, there's not quick trip here. The closest one is there's Atlanta, a quick trip in one. Texas. Yeah. So. And yeah. So yeah. <laughs> there's a Bucky's so in you're, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You're still losing though. Like no. you're still losing. Bucky's, like you don't see anybody walking around with like a freaking quick trip T-shirt on. You see everyone walking around with the Bucky's yeah, well, T-shirt, Bucky's t-shirt. On. <laughs> You have a quick trip T-shirt. Yeah. I even think they made T-shirts. Why did you wear it today? I sh- well, I didn't know we were gonna have this argument. Oh, I should have worn a Bucky shirt. <laughs> Dang yeah. it. Should have wore a Bucky shirt. I also have quick trip cups and big old bag. Oh man, my favorite. It's gonna be a social media bag. Two. Yeah. yeah. Let's, we can get on Instagram or Twitter right now and do a poll. Bucky's or Quick Trip. Ooh, Bucky's is gonna win. Uh, Bucky's is gonna demolish you. Like, it's like I mean, it's fine. Me still losing, but it's fine. Still have my pride. <laughs> it's okay. As long as you have your pride, Quick you have Trip something. all day long. Please stop saying that. You're gonna embarrass yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this argument will go on. Like, Bucky's always wins. Bucky's was more of like a store. It's. That's why it's so cool. It's a gas station. You tell people you're taking them to a gas station and they walk into Bucky's and they can yeah. spend an hour it's, there. It's like Disneyland. Like the Disneyland's of... That was a hefty comparison. <laughs> yeah. It's like I Disneyland agree. of it's like, like Disneyland. gas stations. It's that Bucky's or Disneyland? <laughs> Bucky's. Uh, <laughs> there's no rides, but the you can check, take a picture with the statue. And the snacks are cheaper. Oh, yeah. You can have your... It's fine. I didn't have it. It was like... <laughs> I told you, was this even an argument? I stand by my statement. Now I question your judgment. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's what I get from everybody from Texas. All I the mean, time. you shouldn't start arguments. You can't win. I went in my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just live there. Live there. That went off on a minute. Yeah, yeah there we go. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to follow that up yeah. right now. Does <laughs> all this go on the podcast? <laughs> Just a minute. Usually, if um, I do a lot of songwriters and artists, and if there's like an awkward pause, I don't know how to follow it up. I just go, "Would you like to play a song now?" <laughs> What's your go-to karaoke? Um, I don't know. I, I just sang karaoke for the first time the other night here in Nashville. <laughs> where at? Uh, I forgot where we were at. Was it in Printer's Alley? I don't know. I think it was at AJ's. AJ's and said AJ's. AJ's. Floor. Yeah, I was. Uh, Did you get nervous? No. <laughs> no, I was real I was actually really nervous. Then I got up there. Well, and then I listened to some other people and then I was like, okay, like I know I'm not gonna be that bad, so like it'll be okay. And you're just supposed to have fun, right? <laughs> so that's, that's the point of karaoke. You don't have to be good, you just have fun. Yeah. What'd you so, Um What did I sing? I sang You by Chris Young. And then I sang Baby by Justin Bieber. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. How did the crowd respond? Oh, they loved it. Okay. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they want to sign me. Like the bar wanted me to just come and sing weekly. People yeah. their ten to two song yeah. every day, yeah. every, yeah. every day, every day, every night. But I, I turned them down and just I couldn't do it. Maybe a special appearance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can we get a sample of the no. Justin Bieber chorus? No. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Can't so only for uh, no, uh, only paid appearances now. <laughs> I do not sing for free. Okay, where can everyone follow you? Do you utilize all your social medias? I use I utilize <laughs> Instagram the most, so it's the like T H E Blue Mitchell, and then I have a professional page on Facebook, Facebook. Ezekiel Mitchell Professional Bull Rider, something like that. But yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. We'll link it all in the yeah. show notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, that's what it is. And then Twitter, I hardly ever use that, but. It's a uh, cowboy E Z E. That's it. Yeah, it's kind of like my Twitter's lame. Why? I just I never got. I'm not I a big fan really, of the Twitter. I never really it's got really into quick. it. I'm not funny enough to like tweet yeah, funny exactly. things or clever enough. Yeah. So I just stay off. The only time I tweet is if it goes from Instagram to my Twitter. If I link it, like my <laughs> picture, that's the only tweet. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Is there anything you want to leave us with? 
thank y'all for having me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most definitely, Texas is better than Oklahoma. Leave Leave with fighting words. When the storm rolls in, I'm gonna be ready. Side piece on my hip in case it gets heavy, like a cowboy kicking down doors and taking names. When the storm rolls in, I'm gonna be ready. Side piece.